Hello, in this video, we're going to talk about acne. Acne is the inflammation of pilocybosis unit. The pilocybosis unit consists of hair follicles, sebaceous gland, erector pili muscle, and apocrine sweat glands. So if you look into this picture right here, here we have the hair shaft, the hair follicle, surrounded by these sebaceous glands with their ducts. And there are also some apocrine sweat glands and erector pili muscles. And altogether, these structures are known as pilocybosis unit. And the inflammation of this pilocybosis unit is known as acne. The sebaceous gland, it's an exocrine gland in the dermis of the skin and it secretes oily substance which is known as sebum. So this sebaceous gland right here, it secretes sebum which consists of fatty acids and triglycerides and this sebum when they are excessively produced, they get accumulated in this duct and they plug this duct and when there is accumulation of sebum, this leads to the raised lesion in the skin and this is known as acne. And the sebaceous gland, they enlarge at puberty and hence the acnes are mostly seen in case of adolescence. And the reason for the enlargement of the sebaceous gland is due to increase in the androgens during puberty. So when there is increase in the androgens, there is enlargement of the size of the sebaceous gland. And when there is increase in the size, there is also increase in the production of the sebum. And this, they, and this leads to higher chances of the duct getting plugged. And this is also one of the reason why men's have more acne than women because men's have more amount of androgens. And this also explains why men with androgen insensitivity have no acne at all, whereas women with excess androgens, such as in case of polycystic ovarian syndrome, have acne. Sebaceous gland in the skin produce sebum, and keratinocytes lining the hair shaft produce keratin. Together, sebum and keratin, they, when they are excessively produced, they block the duct, there is bacterial growth, and this leads to acne. And the one of the common bacteria causing acne is Propionibacterium acnes, which is also known as QT bacterium acnes. These bacteria they grow in the sebum, where the sebum acts as a growth media. The sebum consists of fatty acids and triglycerides, and these Propionibacterium, which are anaerobic bacteria, they feed on those triglycerides. There are certain terminologies that you must know. Comido means debris of sebum blocking the sebaceous duct, creating bumps on the face okay so if this is the pilocybosis unit consists of hair follicles and the sebaceous glands so when there is a blockage of this duct and there is the skin becomes raised this raised lesion of the skin is known as comido as you can see in this picture here these are comidos and plural form of comido is comidone Microcomido means microscopic comido, which are not visible to the naked eye. Open comido, which are also known as blackheads. When the comidone is not uh, covered up by the skin, the melanin is exposed to the air and it gets oxidized forming this black plug and these are known as blackheads. In case of closed comido or also known as whiteheads, the skin covers up the plugged area and uh, it's completely blocked by the skin and hence these are known as white hairs. Comedones contain sebum. Sebum contains triglycerides which are used by the bacteria for the growth. Hence there is bacterial infection in, in acne. And acne occurs due to three processes. Hormones or androgens which I've already explained. Androgens increases the size of the sebaceous gland and increase its production and increase the production of the sebaceous gland which leads to blockage of the duct. Bacterial proliferation, the major bacteria is Propionibacterium acnes and all the process of inflammation. Mostly, the acne occurs in most hormone responsive glands that are present on face, neck, chest, upper back and deltoid. And this explains the reason why acnes are mostly seen in this part of the body. Now coming on to the treatment, the most common topical treatment is benzoyl peroxide. It breaks down the keratin and it unblocks the pores. And 
reduces the size of the comedon, hence it's also known as comedolytic. And this also shows some bactericidal action to propionibacterium acnes. Other most common antibiotics used are doxycycline, clindamycin and erythromycin. They kill the bacteria, hence decrease the bacterial colonization. And these two drugs, the benzoyl peroxide and the antibiotics, they are used in case of mild to moderate acnes. Whereas for severe acnes, we give retinoids or vitamin A derivatives. And one of the common examples is isotretinoin, sold under the trade name of acutin. Is also known as 13 cis retinoic acid. Isotretinoin binds to nuclear receptors, the RAR or retinoic acid receptors, and RXR, retinoid X receptor, and decreases the production of the keratin in case of follicles. So, when there is decreased keratin production, the chances of uh, getting plug in the duct is less. Okay, and we should be very careful while using this drug because it's very highly teratogenic. Okay, so young women should take oral contraceptive pills and do pregnancy test prior to treatment. So if you are already pregnant, you should avoid taking isotretinoin because it's highly teratogenic. Some other common side effects include dry lips or chylitis, dry skin, increased susceptibility to sunburn. Some rare side effects are myalgias, headache, depression and anxiety. This much for acne. Thank you.